Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Market Chat. My name is Richard Moglin. Joining me today again is Leif Sorede, the U.S. Investing Champion of 2019. Uh, Leif, so good to see you again. Welcome back to the show. Hey, great to be here, Richard. Thanks so much for having me. The, the channel's uh, grown, obviously. Congrats on your success. Thank you. Um, I was, I was uh, maybe an early adopter or whatever, the second interview, right? Because I knew it was going to be good because you're doing Python and, and I was super right. impressed and I never talked to you about that. But I did, I did some programming myself in high school with the C++ and Pascal. And, you know, if you're doing that kind of stuff for fun, well, you're going to go somewhere with trading. That's for sure. You're going you're gonna to figure something out. So I was excited to be on. Oh, uh, thanks, to be man. back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You started it all. It definitely, uh, these really kicked off once you came on. Um, so we, we went into your background a, a, a whole bunch in the last interview. So if people really want an in-depth um, view of your story, uh, definitely yep. go ahead and uh, check that out. The link will be above. Uh, but really quickly, what's kind of been your trading journey and kind of your major influences along the way? Yeah, my trading journey, uh, kind of more of a nonsense trader in high school, you know, blowing up the first small account to, you know, finally realizing I need to study. And, and I did, you know, that Elder, Van Tharp, Weinstein, you know, especially O'Neill is a big influence. And, you know, in the later years, you know, I did a lot of the breakout strategy was, you know, I almost use it as a trend following strategy or free. And I, I would constantly adjust it and um, eventually came into the thinking that the best breakouts had the average two range tightening and the tightening of the patterns before they moved out. Um, and, and then I you know, needed to practice this and get, get better at that. And I found uh, Mark Minervini, who's using like a VCP pattern, which is, you know, the similar, a similar thing happens as the ATR declines through the pattern. Right. And that more aggressive style. I mean, I want to be as aggressive as possible. And, you know, it's my, my catchphrase. I say rockets only, right? When right. It celebrates the win. And they say that. And because um, I trade only the highest RS stuff. Um, yeah. I just, you know, like that, that book Momentum Masters, you know, you know, with Mark and, and Dan really inspired me to, to, uh, to push this breakout strategies as far as I could, mm -hmm. um, you know, using relative volume, um, and all that inspiration and, you know, I've been doing it for a while now and it's, it, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, after winning the USIC, a lot of people reached out to me and, um, from all over the world, it's just very, very cool, uh, talking about setups and definitely improving my game. And, 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 you know, something I would always recommend is working with other traders, whether it's through a service or, um, just in general, right. You know, your right. friends, then you stay true to your style. And you don't have that style drift and, you know, you, you don't get ahead of yourself and start doing nonsense trading. You, you're only improving because you don't show a bad trade to someone that you want to succeed. Exactly. You don't start, you know, trading nonsense and say, hey, look at this. This is what we should do today. And be like, no, don't do that. And then that's, that's why I recommend always kind of, you know, having trading partners or whatever, friends, things like that. So. Um, and definitely the big books is, you know, how to make money in stocks uh, and the Minervini's book, Think and Trade Like a Champion. Um, those, those are great books that, you know, I kind of base my style off of. Absolutely. So. Yeah, I think we were, we were talking a little bit before we press record, but um, I was talking about how um, I have a group chat with my friends. We talk about trading and uh, meet every Sunday talking about our plans, <laughs> our failed yeah. trades of the past week and the successes too. And it definitely, it definitely helps you keep centered on your style and, and um, yeah. getting feedback from others is so helpful. And uh, I want to say congratulations because in the last time of the interview, you've had another kid. Congrats. Hey, um, thank you. Yeah. And you've started another business. So tell me a little bit about it, um, what yeah. that's been like. It must be crazy. Well, it's been really busy. Um, you know, it's, it's, the, I have four kids. I have, a, you know, a, a two month old now and, and I have four kids, six and under. So it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's really busy, mm -hmm. but yeah, like I, like I said, after, after the championship win and as everybody's reaching out, we're working on setups. One of the competitors of the 2020 contest was saying, we kind of need a space, an area to, um, focus, you know, together working on setups on a, on a bigger scale. And, uh, so I, yeah, I built that champion team trading platform for that purpose. And, and I wouldn't have done if it wouldn't help, if it didn't help my trading. I have to show what I do for hundreds of people and right. It be right. Or, you know, it's, that's, you know, I can definitely handle the pressure and, and, 
they're helping my trades and I'll show some of, of how, how that works. Um, when people give you ideas and, and then you jump into sectors and themes that you didn't know about, mm -hmm. you know, like whether it's drones or something like that. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go through some trades and uh, for sure. Yeah. All right. So one of the big things, so, so let's just get into the relative volume thing I wanted to show first. This is a big thing. Um, everybody kind of needs something like this. And you, I put my watch list on Finvis mm -hmm. and the, uh, you can see this all okay, right? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. All right. Yeah. So these charts move around by themselves during the day based on the relative volume, you know, increase. And, you know, Tiger is one that is huge in the last two days. And same with uh, AVNW there. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this is a little bit of how I picked them. I put them all near pivots. Okay. I and mean, some of this is old and, you know, these worked the other yesterday. I haven't updated it, but we're still just watching it. And you can pick your themes too, seeing where the volume's going. Okay. So um, yesterday it was all like Tilray and, and, and this stuff. So yeah, they continued on and you're having, you're seeing where the volume's going. So you maybe have a chance buying a similar name. Mm -hmm. that's on your watch list. And I kind of want to, you know, I have some ideas of what I want to do, but I kind of want to let the market tell me, and I don't want to try to outsmart the market. So this is why I let, I use this type of screen um, to let, to let the, the most volume show itself. And, uh, you know, you can see it in this form too, mm -hmm. sort of by relative volume in this column. So, you know, you're talking about, and, th and then you can see all these charts pretty well and then they move around. So, mm -hmm. Just uh, and, that, that's one way to pick them. Yeah. And uh, before we go any further, I do want to ask uh, kind of how you, how you set up this list. You said you pick them near pivots, but what's kind of your daily and weekly routine to make sure you're, you're <laughs> buying those stocks near those pivots. Right. So yeah, the part of the, the, the platform gives me tons of ideas because this team members put up all these setups like CLNE, they, they, they were all over this one. Um, I didn't take that, but I'm seeing a bunch of people, you know, talking about how this was setting up and they're buying it yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and and there's, there's no recommendations or anything on there. It's just, just setups. Um, so yeah. And, and all, all these ones like FTCH, uh, this fire is an old one, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're looking through things that are set up at the pivot and AMRS. I bought this today and it shows up and, and skills and blinks looking good. I almost bought that. So, right. Yeah. So you want to go through, you know, your, the high RS names, you want them near pivots. And I also like the ATR declining too. It shows me that it's calmed down and the move hasn't been made yet. If the ATR is rising and the bars are getting really tall or they're wacky, the, the move is, is either it's going up or it's going down already. And I'm usually late. Right. So we do like tight action right to a buy point. And um, that's what we're looking at here. Like Pulse, I almost bought this today, but it's so thin. I don't, I don't want to play with it so much <laughs> right at the end of the day today. Uh, but yeah, this has a lot of relative volume, very tight. Right. And that's what I'm looking for. And that's a, I think that's a high tight flag too. So. And uh, for people who don't know, what, what is ATR? Well, the average true range is like the height and distance between the bars. And it's like an average of them. It just, it just shows them calming down, right? So if you have huge right. bars, it's going to be elevated. And, and if it's small, you know, it, you want it declining, right? You, it, and then, you know, from contraction comes expansion. We're looking for a turn and on volume, hopefully. We like it to get the volume to get quiet up to that point. Right. And uh, we want to read that. So otherwise you may be falling into a trap. Was, we're always trying, it's not, it's more than just buying a pattern. Okay, we, we've got to have themes. We've got to have groups. We've got to have big money behind us. We've got to see the money on the screen on the volume bars. I want to see sky skyscraper bars. And I'll, I'll show you on some other charts. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so just gathering all your ideas and themes and, and having everything near pivots. Like you don't want to waste your time with stuff that you can't buy for a week or two. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure it's, you have quiet, tight areas and focus on that. Otherwise you're spread out too far and you want to use alerts. That way you're, you know, you can't check all the charts at once, but if you use some pretty active tools like this, you can click through 40 charts in a couple minutes, not even maybe a, a 30 seconds. If you're a speed reader, I had one of those books as a kid. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That, yeah. that kind of goes into my next question, which I think I already know the answer, but if you've got a bunch of stocks working, say it's a, it's a bull market, things are breaking right. out every single day. 
Um, yeah. How do you decide which ones to take and, and uh, which ones to leave for, for somebody else? Right. So that goes back to this, the volume also. So if I, if I have to choose, I mean, you know, if, if open, it looks good and, and uh, Tiger is right at the buy point, but Tiger has tons of volume and open doesn't. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to go with the one that has more interest because those buyers may not stop buying. They, right. They're going to continue to buy, hopefully. Um, and, and that's what we're looking for. If it just drifts up through the buy point, you may be walking into a trap or it could still work. It's, you know, some people do buy stops before the market and all that. That might work for some people, but I like to raise my odds as much as possible and read what's actually going on on the day. If, if you come in and it's all these cannabis stocks moving, um, that that's changes the focus right away. Mm -hmm. So usually when I come in, I, I have some ideas, like I said, but that can all change very quickly. Like you have to be agile, like mentally and, and mentally flexible. Like, you know, if you, if you want to come in and buy AFA, but that's not doing anything, you switch to, uh, you know, Tiger and these types of stocks, mm -hmm. you know, maybe all Chinese stocks or something. You, got, you have to switch your focus quickly and be, um, and be flexible that way because you can't come into the market thinking you know everything or know where the money is going necessarily. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, do, how do market conditions play into that? Because, I mean, recently we, we were a little bit extended. We had a quick flush down. But now this week, the yeah. first two days, we're recording this on, on Wednesday. Right. Um, we, so far, we've had a bunch of gap ups in a row on the indexes and things are looking better in just a few days. Well, that goes to the height of the bars on the index, like the ATR there is really all over the place. So that, that made me very, very cautious. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a hedge on that I, I was doing great on and then sold half even because it just turned around and then stopped half on the other. And my open positions, you know, Yela and, uh, you know, SI and all these other ones, they, they, they just kept going. So the ones that were not working, not going anywhere, you know, it's okay to size down if you're not sure. Because mm -hmm. you always want to protect your, your you know, you want to keep your equity curve intact. Like today I'm all time highs, even though I'm basically on a red signal. Still, because, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to get away from that. We're not sure yet. I mean, you, you don't want to come back so sure when Sunday night, the E-mini futures were, um, they were under the 50-day moving average, I, I believe. And then they just, you know, shot them right up. So, but the Fed is so easy. I mean, that's just the other part of, of the market. I mean, if the Fed is easy, you have to defer to that. Usually it's, I'd say, but, but you can't, you know, you never know when the party's over. So, you know, you have to listen to the stocks and that goes to the read of the market. If you want to jump there, which is, I use the mm -hmm. FFTY mm -hmm. and this is becoming more popular um, with traders and such, but, you know, you have a nice list you put out on Twitter, um, the leaders and stuff. And, you know, I, I don't know how you pick them. How do you pick those winners, those leaders rather? It's, it's pretty subjective. Kind of it's, right. uh, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of cancel and fundamentals, but I also want a uh, really good price action too. So mm. the first time you came on here, and I, I think we'll talk about it later, uh, you were talking about XP and the high tight flag um, breakouts you bought of that. Um, right. And that, that has triple digit earnings, sales yeah, off the yeah. charts. So that's a clear leader, great price action, great fundamentals. Right. Um, so that's going to be on there. And then yeah, it's kind of all the ones that I want to be focused on and, and want to be in if it presents a buying opportunity. No, and No, and I hear you. I, well. so, so I do this just as a broader read of it. Mm -hmm. And I let IBD pick them, so right. I don't have to always do that. Otherwise, I, I feel like I might be caught in all momentum names if I, yeah. you know what I'm saying, like, and I don't get the right read. So I'm just used to this. And, and since I started the service, it's all I've used is this. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so basically coming out of this, I would say if you came out of this box, you know, trading this style and you were profitable, um, then, then you might be a pretty good swing trader because this, this was very difficult. Mm -hmm. you know, look, look at these drops in here. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's not a stock, but it, it represents all of them. And you know, you had, you have your base and it broke out and then it retested and then it got out. So th this was kind of a nice environment when, when you finally got out. Um, but up here we're, we're so extended and this goes back to my, my reading of bases and stuff, which I, you know, I practiced a lot with Mark and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, reading the right sides of the bases, um, there, there's no large basis almost. Mm -hmm. So th that's the juice that you need to propel the market. Like this is a nice base. These are all consolidating all the growth stocks. Now we're making the move and the move may continue. That's why I wrote save here. Um, I wrote this the other day. Are they going to save it? Cause it's, you know, I kind of figured they might. 
Um, but you got to be cautious. I mean, you have a lot, a lot of down volume there and, and the way to read them, I have, you know, I have the IBD 50. Mm -hmm. I think this is them. Hopefully it pulled it up. Yeah. This WST, this looks like it. So you look down this list and you can see on the right side of these charts that, you know, everything's fairly firm and there's very, very few, uh, you know, and this is all sorted by relative volume. So maybe you don't want to look at the top ones necessarily, but they, uh, they're, they're fairly firm is, is a quick read of it. So mm -hmm. I don't see any kind of disaster lingering here. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a reason for caution though. The, the more extended we are, the more it tends to flush. And, and this goes to kind of like the rising wedge or, or, or channel up situation for the market, which, you know, I'll get into later if you want to see that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, the high tight flag is, is my favorite thing, right? So, you know, you can read about this. Uh, this guy has some studies on it. And I trade diagonals and stuff and obviously influenced by other, other traders and, and combine as much as I can because I want to I want to catch as, as many of these as I can when they're working. And right now they're, they're working really well. So I'm trying not to let them go without me and, and you know, trying to press my bet and press my luck. And I'll show you some mm -hmm. of these, too, if you want to see some actual trades we did on the platform. Yeah, let's do it. And uh, before we actually get too far, uh, you mentioned that the, the market was extended. How do you define extended? Is there, is there a metric for moving average or um, how, how do you take a look at the, the chart and say, yeah, I mean, it's just a little bit too far. If it's know? away from the moving averages and there's really no basis for the underlying, you know, like mm -hmm. for the leaders and stuff. And it's just, if this is all the base you're going to get in the top right of this chart here, I mean, that's extended, obviously. Right. So it's subjective. It's, there's some art to all of it, but mm -hmm. you know, we're using the basic thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and it goes back to your profit and loss. And if you're, if you're having success, uh, no matter what, like if I, if everything I bought just went straight up, I'm going to override some stuff mm -hmm. like a, a basic read of the market saying it, it's extended. Or if someone says, Oh, we're going to, this is more like the dot com bubble or something like that. Right. Well, I wish it was, can it be the dot com bubble so I can make some money like, like nothing else. And, you know, uh, you know, everything breaks out and sticks like that's what I want. So, and that's part of it too. We want to see things break out and, you know, this broke out, did it hold? Okay. You know, I sold into that and it came back. So th this broke out and, and went really far without me. I mean, I got out here, but I missed mm -hmm. about, I missed about 17% to the downside, you know, cause it, you know, it's just kind of turned and, and this volume kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, of course it can do that. Anything's possible, but, you know, you catch a good, uh, you know, 90% or so for most of your sale uh, and then move that to something else that's working. That's, you know, it's all about compounding your gains, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and what I heard you saying basically there is, is you're listening to your stocks. Is your style working? All right, let's press the press on the gas. If it's not, Let's, let's slow down a little bit, basically. Right. If I couldn't get any of these to go, then, you know, I would look for another, you know, or just pause or I dial it back or get smaller. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, and you don't want to, and then everyone says, oh, what, what's your position size and all that? Uh, well, everyone's different, of course. And you, you have to trade the position size that you're going to trade effectively. Like if you're going to choke because it comes in 1% at the buy point, um, it's too big for you probably. Right. So. That's just something I say, and for educational purposes only, everything I say, of course. Um, yeah, so, so this was the other one. So you want to be concentrated. So this was working, the mm -hmm. EH, which is, you know, a drone. Everyone's going to be in China on a drone in however many years, and everyone bid that up, you know. I don't know why, but that's what was popular. Right. And we, one of my members was saying, okay, look at AVAV, and all the drone stuff is looking good. And it kind of uh, was out of position, so I started looking everywhere else, and I came up with this one. It's just a basic cup and handle. I don't think this is a high tight flag, but gave it the benefit of the doubt because it had the volume trigger on this kind of low area. Mm -hmm. Maybe I even bought it late, but I mean, you know, 75% on some of that. And we're, we're taking it off. We're, we're, we're compounding the gains. And, uh, you know, my stop is very close. You know, we're, we're not risking too much and we're moving the money somewhere else, basically. And can I, can I ask you a question about this chart? So go, going through the base, what are you looking for after the initial flagpole, the 253% move to, to basically say that's setting up constructively, both in yeah. terms of the price and volume? Well, you know, they say you can see the cup and handle in the volume and there we go. Right. So the cup, there's low volume at the bottom. No one wants to sell it down there. Mm -hmm. They bid it up 
and then there's the the handle the mm -hmm. low the low volume there and then volume out right so i could buy off of this this chart alone probably mm -hmm. if i had a wide enough stop i wouldn't want to try it but it's giving you the signal right okay so we're reading the up and the low volume also that when, when they sell it down there's no volume you know that means something and, and it's all about interpreting what you're seeing on the screen and you know it's the theme so the theme is popular and for whatever reason so that's where you want to put your money because mm -hmm. the big money are in these skyscrapers mm -hmm. and they're going to push you up out of the pattern mm -hmm. and if i don't see that on the chart i'm just gambling kind of you know i'm, I'm and sometimes you know i get it wrong plenty and i'll show some of those too i mean it's you get a big win and small stop and, and do that. You know, I could lose several times and, you know, this would be it's still profitable if I tried this one with it. So, and this Makes could sense. set up again. It's actually flagging out and have this looks maybe like that next uh, rocket base, which is the pattern I'll show. It's something I call, something I call a rocket base. I'll show you later. Mm -hmm. After this. The yeah, you want to talk about this. <laughs> so this is funny too, because, I think this is my most popular indicator, at least on Twitter. I only, I only put one on there. This is, I, this is inspired by other stuff. It's just a joke. But basically when you're like, oh, honey, you know, I did it. You know, look at us. You go to, your, you go to, your, you know, I go to my wife and I'm, she's like, are you selling any of that? And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Oh, you know, that, that's, <laughs> whoops. And then the next day you get, you know, you it's come slams. out. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Basically, when you start bragging to your to your significant other, you're, it's time to maybe look at your risk management and sell some, the significant other indicator. So that's just some fun there. I'll just get, get rid of that. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so Here's Generac. In, yeah, back in some charts, it's a, it was a higher RS uh, name. And um, I, I love candlesticks too. You, you can read some, I have some favorite patterns and you have these, washouts of these uh, sellers in here mm -hmm. it has some vcp in it and all that of course marks pattern and little cup and handle Every, everything's there but i really wanted to buy this after this three line strike candlestick mm -hmm. which engulfs these previous three bars but i didn't see any volume right mm -hmm. so i had to wait until i had this trigger i didn't have to wait i just chose to wait because mm -hmm. you know there, and there wasn't not, there wasn't a lot of bases like this at the time. I'm pretty sure. I mean, like I said, everything's very extended. So, um, to, to get a leader, you know, you want to work your way in there somehow, but I also wanted them to tell me that there's real buyers there and that they, they showed up on this day and not even huge, but you know, it, it, it checked this pivot here and came out. So I bought it there, you know? Right. And we're closing into extreme strength mm -hmm. and there's no, there's no volume up here. Right. Just, when it floats up far enough and I'm up 25% on something like this. Um, I did this with TTD also, if you, you could look that up, just kind of mm -hmm. drifted up on low volume. I sold it and then it just crashed. So um, yeah, and I don't have enough size. I'm crashing it myself. I'm just saying it just, there was nothing going on with it. It just rolled over. So that's a big stock. So, um, and, and, and FUBU is, this is a, this is that high tight flag. I actually tried a few times. I tried, I tried this here and stopped even, and I'll, and I'll do that more than most people, you know, you'd see most people do it. If it gets out a certain risk multiple, especially in certain conditions, I'll, I might sell 25% and stop to even just to get paid and get a free look. Uh, and, and the volume was light, but it, it got bigger here. And there was some kind of a expectation breaker on this turn here. And, and I saw a bunch of volume. So it, it was, maybe like 500% the daily average volume. I was a little late to it also, but you know, you just got this 100% move, um, closing most of it up at the top. So, you know, and when, you when you're up 40 some percent and close 25%, now you're back, you know, near your original position uh, value, right? So it doesn't hurt to take some profits out as you go. And I don't worry about the taxes. I let the accountant do that, right? You know, yeah, people say this is a leader and it should go on forever and you know they're, they're probably right i don't know so but i miss all this downdraft and uh over 50 percent in the base i'm not buying it i don't know whose rule that is exactly probably marks or something but um because this is you know these bars are getting crazy up here and you'll see the atr is all over the place and these are, you know when you get up 
when you do that climb, you get in that base that deep, you climb that high, you're going to slip a few times. Right. So I don't know where you put your stop on this thing. Right. So that this trades over basically. I mean, there, there's a lot of interest in here somewhere. It just needs to maybe, you know, work itself out. I'd probably buy it higher at some point maybe. So we'll revisit it. Of course, you know, Hey, could I ask you a question about this? Yeah. Um, so uh, I noticed on some of these screens, you, you, you measure your, your risk and also you take profits potentially at R multiples. So can you explain how you use um, that both in terms of uh, sell stops and also for taking profits? Yeah. So if I'm on like a green signal, everything's working and you know, bases and stocks are breaking out and holding. I'm more free with it. I might not even move my stop when I'm up to risk multiples. And, and I, and I have all these notes kind of written on my platform. And, you know, if you're on a red signal, it's basically fully dis at your discretion. I might just cut it if it goes out and comes back, you know, two right. or 3% or whatever. I mean, that that's all on the table at that point. Cause we're just trying not to lose. We're trying to see if we can get anything to stick. And, and I might try something several times. Um, so it's, it's pretty active and I do a lot of trades. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot to learn from, but, but I'm getting a lot of these ideas from, uh, members on the platform too. And that's, um, some, some really interesting traders people would know, but it's, it's all anonymous on there. So we have, we even have a, we have an Olympic gold medalist on there too, which I think is kind of interesting. <laughs> so, you know, all, all these people in there really trying to, you know, compete hard is it's, it's great. So, um, Anyway, so yeah, get, get ideas from everyone and, and keep an open mind to, I didn't know what FUBU was at all. You know, maybe even when I bought it, I was a little confused, but it just seemed, it, people would say, hey, look at this. And it was doing, it was acting right. So, you know, that's the open mind and, and never turn your back on a stock, right? When this sets up again, you know, I want to be ready. So, but this is too messy for me yet. Other systems might be able to buy it. It's not for me, so. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit your, fit your system. So uh, right. move on to the next one. Exactly. So this was, this is another of those rocket bases and uh, maybe I haven't explained what that is yet. Yeah. Go, go ahead and explain that. Yeah. So rocket base is uh, it can be cup and handle or VCP or anything like that, but it's more about a failed high tight flag. Cause I'm always looking for failed high tight flags. And I was always frustrated about, you know, what am I going to do? Oh no, it's more than 25% decline where am I going to draw the line and, and, and how am I going to get into that? It's a powerful stock. So you don't want to lose it. Mm -hmm. So something like this and foreign growth was a big thing for me this year, obviously. And, you know, I was very focused on this, you know, you have these, these big skyscraper bars, a lot of interest in the name. And then it just set up this low pivot and, and this volume turn right here was enough. Mm -hmm. And I was a little early, but you know, it, it worked and I'm trying to get a hundred percent out of this thing <laughs> before I close it. So don't sell it. Put your video out after, after it's hundred percent. So they don't sell it. Yep. So, yeah. So I have over half of it left and I'm going to see if I can catch that. So this looks a little bit like a, a confluence of kind of a Mark Minervini low cheat and also a, a downward trend line. So do you use downward trend lines much or is, are you mostly looking for horizontal pivots? I put some influence, uh, emphasis on it, but I'm not using that as my primary trigger. Right. I know a lot of people do that. So I'm adding an edge. I think if I can break the downtrend, find a good pivot, you know, a pivot is just a certain flat area you can, you know, buy across, right? And, and you don't right. want it to be wedged up. This is kind of has a, it's a little sideways. So that's fine. But the volume, I mean, look, I could have bought it on this day. I don't know if you see my cursor. Yep. Yep. It came out over that. But there was no volume there. I mean, this day it was, you know, we're hitting the volume. So, you know, I, I gave it, you know, hit it with what I had and uh, I just put my stop and, it, you know, it came close to the stop even the next day and uh, even here. So, and, and that would be okay because, you know, when you catch a few of these, you can pay for some small stops. Right. So, right. And can you talk a little bit about trusting your stop? Because uh, I see yeah. some people, uh, they, they get a bit scared. Stuff starts to pull in on low volume. It doesn't yeah. hit their stop, but they, they sell anyway. And then it just takes off without them. Like, like this would have done if, if, you oh. had, uh, if you had sold early. Yeah, well, you know, I've had plenty of stops that I've taken a 3% stop. And, and I'll show one, which is it's kind of a, it's a comedy sometimes when it's up 50% the next day. Right. But, and some people are really bothered by that, but I know 
you know, I'm going to find these over time and that's going to happen. You know, mm -hmm. I missed, I didn't take a Palantir, which is one, I think I moved these around funny. I'll, I'll show you that one later mm -hmm. uh, that had all these signatures. Um, Cause I was doing something else that day, trading something else that, you know, and uh, yeah, you just, you can't have that, that FOMO uh, or, or, you know, Oh, I'm going to miss it. And you can't be in everything. Right. So there's all those things to consider and, you have to have the confidence and you will over time, if you're a newer trader to um, know that you're going to catch these big winners. And mm -hmm. some of the, some of the people that, that come on and talk to me, they say, Oh, you know, I've never caught any of these, like, you know, how do you do it and all that stuff. And, you know, it's just about knowing that you have these patterns that are going to work. And one of them is going to go that far and pay for your losses. And then over time, and you're going to be profitable over time. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that. And, and it's, it's training your eye to find those bases and setups that the supply and demand characteristics are such that just a little bit of above average volume can really push the stock up quickly. Is that right? Right. So that, that takes it. This is a good example too, for edit. Mm -hmm. I was suspicious of this pattern. I didn't want to buy it. Um, yeah. So in the morning on this day, I'm seeing this crazy volume. It was over, I was using MarketSmith actually, and looking at the fundamentals and all this stuff. And it was, I think it was between a thousand to 1200% average daily volume in a high tight flag. And, and uh, you know, how many days is that? One, two, three, four, five. And it's getting pretty tight in there too. Yeah. It's got an so, inside so, day before this. Okay. So yeah. So I left the ATR at the bottom here. You can see that declining throughout the pattern. It, mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to see because this pattern's bigger. I mean, the, the chart's bigger. But if you dial in, you can see it dips right into the buy point. And that's good for beginners to use, especially that need, you know, you, you can see the, it visualizes the contraction for you. So that, that's the tool that I, that I recommend. And you'll catch a lot of VCPs with that and, you know, Mark's pattern and, you know, cups and handles and all, all the tight action at the end of uh, the pivot. And mm -hmm. you're, you're going to catch, you're going to catch something like this. It, you can screen for this too. You know, you know how to program and all that. So I have, I have a screens for that on stock charts. Um, and I was talking to Grayson, I might do something with stock charts too. They, I mm -hmm. mean, this is the, the, the only programming I think I can do is with this, but I had my moderator program this relative strength thing where the, they move around all day. Um, that, I mean, that, that's pretty cool. So I don't think you can do that. I think you have to put a little language on, on the end of it, actually. Um, but it's not that hard. Very simple. Maybe I'll just share that on Twitter or something, too. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And can you talk about why you sold this stock where you did? Because I, I see a couple oh. of different blue circles, which I think is uh, your sell. Right, right. right. So, so red is buy, blue is sell. And that might have been more useful at the first chart, if you didn't know. Uh, I mean, I know you know, but yeah, for, for your viewers, um, it's always good to do the basics. I tend to start at the advanced stuff. So yeah, you, you get it out that far, you're moving stock to even, you're taking a profit and that can be 25% for me, usually something. I take a lot of quarter scales um, depending mm -hmm. on the market. And then when you get this ridiculous level, I started to sell, maybe I sold a lot more, but I don't, I don't want to be a day trader. So I have to leave a piece on. Mm -hmm. And you know, this reversal bar took out, you know, this area here and I, yeah, I just closed it and, and that wasn't what I want to see. Sometimes these just go straight up. So you, I, I was looking for that. I didn't want to cut it off too soon, right? I mean, but that would have been mm -hmm. fine also just to book the profit. You know, that, that's, that all depends on how you're doing and, the, you know, and your read of the market and stuff like that. Very discretionary. I mean, you know, I wouldn't say anything I did here is perfect or wrong, but, you know, looking back with that volume, it's one of the more obvious buys I've ever seen, right? Right. And you don't have to be a genius to do that, but to be ready and have the right tools and, and, you know, be able to pull the trigger and that that's, that's key. And that takes maybe some experience and always go smaller, right? Go smaller, you know, then you can have more confidence. Mm -hmm. okay, if you don't have the confidence, just size it down a little bit and there's nothing wrong with making this profit smaller until you get, you know, you get bigger and, and better. Absolutely. So here's some an example of confluence with XP. Uh, which which we talked a little bit about earlier. So can you explain what you're looking for? Because here it's it's almost a little bit different than your previous buys because this is almost yeah. within the base versus the right. breakout. Well, the reason I did this is because it, if you check 
Richard's previous video we did. I traded this maybe three times on the year and I basically can't go wrong with this one. So talk about confidence. And then we'll talk about confluence because I came in this super confident because I'm like, well, I can, I can do no wrong with this stock. And sometimes that helps, but you just have mm -hmm. to wait for your cue. Mm -hmm. okay, so I'm realizing this is setting up a base. Um, and yeah, I traded, I traded this uh, much lower and then traded it again into this jump here, I think, mm -hmm. uh, in October. If I'm, uh, maybe not, I can't remember. I can't, you, have to, you have to check the, maybe the, the last video in Twitter or something. But this one, I was ready for this down, diagonal down. Someone's looking at that, right? Mm -hmm. But not really too much volume. And then, you know, you want to imagine a pivot. Okay, there's a sort of a cheat, sort of a pivot. I'm looking for an excuse to get in and there's a volume trigger there. Mm -hmm. The next day there was still more volume and I, I was confident that that might've been the turn. So I bought this two days in a row and I, this is official positions and it, with alerts and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're selling up partials off, you know, when you, when you go up so many percent and sell 15, you're still keeping a good size position and trying to keep as much as possible until, um, you know, up here, there's, you know, very low volume day, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe people are a little bit less interested or something and they're you're only ready to sell it. So that's just a clue. It doesn't have to be the end of it, but at some point you have to maybe call it or move your stop. And, and these blue lines are just every time I move the stop up, you mm -hmm. know, and then maybe I moved it up to, to this point when it was up there or just closed it one or the other. I can't remember which. So, so it's interesting. Uh, we, we talked about in the last video, your reverse pocket pivot where you're looking yeah. for, very low volume, but that's that's during the setup of the of the trade. It's not when it's already extended up there making new yeah. highs. So it's yeah. it's interesting how the volume dynamic shifts where in one spot right. low volume is good and in, in this other spot it's not so good. Yeah. So I mean even at the lows here, you know, you can see there's oh there's some of these are not good bars, but yeah, I mean you have to read it. But when they make a turn like this and it's always about you know the the turn when it finally goes on volume. That's that's where I'm interested. Right. So, and then, you know, right now this chart's much higher, but I avoided it, you know, so it's not perfect, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm taking pieces out, you know, and building the equity curve up. So that, that's, that's what we're trying to do. Absolutely. Different time frames for everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is the rocket base. This is what I was, should have put up first, but a little bit out of order. This is actually an open position too. And I've sold, sold plenty of this, but um, yeah, this, this huge high tight flag that failed now it's within 50% and, you know, very VCP cup and handle ish, you know, making a turn there. Um, and then just riding that up as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so that's the rocket base. And you see this volume is, these are the skyscrapers. These, you know, you see in the pattern, there's buyers, there's buyers, there's buyers, all these up bars are higher than the, you know, all the down volume once you get into the pattern. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely, to me, there's some interest there. Um, this down day that looks like a scary bar, it wasn't on a lot of volume. And then, you know, maybe that's the reverse pocket pivot right there. Mm -hmm. Then I bought the, a little bit of volume coming out the next day. And then after that, big buyers and now it just floats up. So going, going to the pivot by how, how do you set that horizontal level? Um, and I know we talked about beforehand, yeah. you're looking for a drift down to shake out those last bit of uh, weak holders. So can you talk right. about how, how you set a pivot and a point where through that on volume, that's your go signal. Well, I want to get down, you know, low as possible. Because if, if I'm buying this, this top, this would have worked also just like a breakout point here if I draw it up there. But the, this is quite large, these ranges here. So I won't go more than a 5% stop. Typically, if I do, it's, you know, 6% by accident. I mean, I'll do mm -hmm. three or something like that and try it again. And so this, this was, you know, just, just reading this turn coming in here off the average is caught up. I like the 21 to catch up, um, in, in the space, the theme, you know, I, I, right. tell, I can't tell you how many people are, 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 are telling me about this theme. And if it wasn't for the people I trade with, you know, especially at CTT, I, you know, I don't know anything about electric cars, you know what I mean? So I think that's what this is too, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they make three wheeled electric vehicles. Uh, right. I, I've looked at their website. I, I don't know if I would drive it, but I mean, it's the stock is working. So I'm, I'm not going to complain about that. I of them and I think they make, maybe they make stuff for hospitals and things like that too. Right. I mean, 
I think there, there's a change and there's all these notes. So I have tons of notes. I know where to go. And if you know, if you have some good ideas and you can focus on something like this, you're setting yourself up for success versus just what, the, you know, a big tech leader or something like that. You know, you want the N and can slim, right? The, the new, mm -hmm. right. Isn't that what N is? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's kind of new. So, and that's, that's that rocket base. And, uh, this is one, uh, one of, one of my members gave me this idea and it was a great idea, except I stopped 3% and then it took off like over 50% the next day. <laughs> right. So this is quite gut wrenching for most people. I just have, you know, a laugh about it. Uh, cause it got listed on the NASDAQ. This was on the Amex and I really don't trade there, but look at the, this is that rocket base right. Some to a little shakeout. Um, yeah. So. You know, I wanted to try this and, and it just dumped me and took off. And, and that happens a lot, but that's, th you know, three, it was a 3.3% planned loss or something like that. It was very, very tight. And, you know, I got caught, but I don't let that rattle me because, and, and I tell my members, at least, at least you found this, you knew, you know, you got something really good, even though we got shook, we know what we're looking for. Right. I mean, don't lose your confidence just because you got shook on one right and uh yeah and then look at that volume i mean it's, it's really nice so yeah this is actually on on the after you got shook out it actually if you go back to that for just a second yeah. um it has a ticker monkey wick setup where it opens within the wick and yeah. then break breaks above that high so oh the wick I, play oh oliver yeah. said that and that's all i hear everyone talking about wick plays <laughs> oh man he's got quite a return amazing Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's a sign of strength. I actually talked to him about the wick play and stuff. So what he was telling me is it's a, a, just a sign of strength. It's not necessarily like tradable all the time, but if it's, if it's in, the, in the wick at the pivot, I mean, it just is a confluence of right. events. And it's just something to put in the, uh, you know, tool bag. In, your, in, the, in the tool bag, right? On the tool belt, you know, come to, come to work with that, uh, the wick play in mind. And it's just one more thing to use to to make sure you're, you're reading the, and the candlestick reading, I think is important and uh, chart patterns. You have to kind of see like, this is that sideways to down drift. Mm -hmm. You know, David Ryan always talks about that and Mark does. And, you know, you, you have to let the sellers get out and then the volume turn, you know, there was volume coming out, but it, you know, it just got, they can get screwy and just throw you out. Um, and and yeah. to really analyze this chart, I mean, can you scroll down a little bit to look at the ATR? So yeah. it's, it's pulling back to, and the pivot and also right at that last, um, right at that last move down the stock, the, the RS line versus the SPX is actually moving up. I think if you scroll, scroll back up, I'm making right, you scroll right. a lot, but yeah. you can see it's outperforming the market, it's staying tight. You've got a bunch of bars within, um, another mm -hmm. bars range. And it really tightens up right before this huge move on volume. And the ATR illustrates the tightening of the bars themselves and the distance and all that. So. You know, this, if you scan for, you know, 14 day ATR, um, you know, 10 days ago is higher than today. You know, you have, and, and we have all these scans out there for uh, members and stuff. And you, you can, you can get these, all, you know, just a list of them and you can start there just for the pattern. But, you know, you got to have it coming out. You got to have some volume. You got to be in the right theme and you got to see some interest and there, you know, there, there, there was a good shake and this shake, and I prefer it on the, the half, the last half of the pattern, actually. Mm -hmm. um, this shake tells me that all the new, the, all these holders, the stops below here, potentially. Right. So maybe I should have gone a little wider with the stop, but I didn't really want to be in this kind of a little bit low quality name, but this is what you can get out of low quality names. You play with fire, you know, sometimes it's a bottle rocket, right. It just goes up. So I don't know. Is there a dollar volume or, or liquidity level that is kind of your minimum? Because this is this is oh, a, sure. yeah, a nine yeah, dollar stock. Or I don't want to be five percent of the uh, average daily volume traded, right. and then you get trapped, especially in something like this. And I think I was looking at that, and, and you know, I don't don't want to show this to people trading. There's there's funds on my platform and stuff. I, I don't want to <laughs> put on something, uh, you know, encouraging people to get trapped in stocks and right course so we want to we do want to have that level of liquidity of course so makes sense um yeah and this is another rocket base this palantir and you can see the atr just this great tightening little vcp almost and 
you know, had this expectation break or this, this sell down and this turn. I mean, this was a great buy, but I, I didn't take it, but you see the volume and the depth. And this is the high tight flag that failed. And once again, it comes in on schedule. I like six to eight weeks and that's just, you know, those super stocks do that. So, you know, you put this up on your list after this and give it some time and patience is really important. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think I saw people beating this up, you know, all throughout this pattern. I'm like, what, what are you buying? I mean, I know you want to get in this because of the move, but you have to have the right buy point. You got to have the volume trigger. Um, yeah, it all has to set up, you know, the diagonal with a pivot coming off the moving averages on volume, ATR tightening. Uh, yeah, rocket base, good stuff. Did you try to trade the IPO base at all? You know, I think I did trade this. Uh, I think I bought it like in here and got stopped. I, I didn't do that right. No. <laughs> so no, I have some stops too, plenty of them, but yeah, this one got away from me. So just like it this it happens to everybody. Yeah. So, and then I feel like if it's too obvious then I get, I get in trouble with a, with a trade like AHCO, you have the flat pivot, the diagonal, you have some volume, you have a shakeout. I think that was a secondary. Mm -hmm. Um, you have some tightening, some pretty extreme tightening there. Um, and then as it makes a move, of course, the bars start getting crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so it was working for a second and then it just dropped. Mm -hmm. And um, I call that the, what indicator is that? The most obvious trade ever indicator when everybody's pumping it, you know, and, yep. and then you know that and you still buy it and you fall for it. So, you know. Well, maybe it tightens up and when everybody's not looking yeah. at it, it works. Well, that's another thing. You know, don't turn your back on a stock. That That's for sure. So you, you always want to come back to a name uh, you know, it's definitely setting up properly. It's not like the trade's over. It just shook me. And my stop is, you know, what are they saying now? Paper hands and diamond hands. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So now I got paper hands, I guess, on that one. And the diamond hands are still holding, but. Well, I I'd rather take a paper cut than uh, something worse yeah, than that. Yeah, so. you don't want to take too many paper cuts and too many in a row. Sizing, I'm sizing down, of course. And then, you know, all these kind of rules. And you have to develop your own rules, really. Uh, you know, if you like my rules, it's just kind of like use them as a guide, but everybody eventually is going to have their own rules. You know, right. I, I would say, you know, two traders trading the same style, trained by the same person. I mean, you have different results. Just, it's just human nature. So, um, people are going to act different and, and we all have emotions and things like that. So, and, um, uh, oh yeah. So selling in context, I have this chart up here. This was, a, this was a trade I took. And uh, why did I sell it so early here? This is something to important too. So I'm looking at purple mattress, which I think took a 15% dive. And th this stock is also a mattress company. Mm -hmm. And it was just sitting at that point. And it, maybe it went down like 2% off the high and I saw the other stock roll over. So I just sold it up there and then you know avoided the 13% downdraft, of course. But the diamond hands are winning with the overall trend. Yep. But that would have been a stop for me. So, you know, selling in context, everything's in context. You have to read the market, right? Otherwise, you're not doing, definitely not doing championship style trading. Uh, you know, maybe you're doing trend following or something like that, which is fine. I mean, whatever works for for the individual, right? And where where did you get into the stock? Was it the high tide flag? It's um, pretty short. No, I was only in it for a few percent. Uh, I mm -hmm. was in it maybe right here. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the, a couple of days before, just buying that coming out there was not really any volume there either so i wasn't too excited about it was happy to cut it right I, I, you know sometimes you can read the volume wrong too it, you, you go in the morning there's some volume and then it's crickets the rest of the day now you're in a stock so right that might be something to even size down if i bought a breakout you know with with these volume bars down there you, you might want to just size it down in general unless it just starts floating up and anything's possible and i'm not knocking people to buy stuff with no volume it's just um that's for what you me, look for. I, I like clues. To me, right. it tells me something. And uh, yeah, there's, that's just the way I do it. So, And uh, um, I, I'm sure somebody's going to ask this. So could you go back to your chart for just a second? Because I want to make sure people yep. know kind of what moving averages you're using and kind of your general layout. So could you explain um, what you're using and also kind of how you develop that? Well, I just like the 21 EMA. It's just the faster moving average. And, you know, big leaders tend to hug it. Mm -hmm. and use that and you know you buy turns off of it you know you can try something in here but it's a little creative and 
Um, obviously the 50 day moving average and, and the 200 days so far down here, of course, because this is, you know, a leader. And this just goes back to Weinstein and, and uh, Stan Weinstein and, and all the trend followers and stuff, right? 200 day moving average. You want to be above that. And all the moving averages above each other like this is very nice and clean, very good uptrend, something you'd want to attack, but you know, it's, it's kind of wedged up there and just kept going. So some stuff is just not for me and it just wedge up forever, you know, so mm -hmm. I'll just continue to go up and there's not really a lot of buy points, but that's, that's fine. I'll just trade something else. There's plenty to trade and maybe too much to trade. And that can be, that can be an issue too. Uh, you know, indecision. We don't, you know, you don't want indecision when you're trading. Um, mm -hmm. Got to have your focus and you, you know, you, you don't want to have too much style drift. Um, mm -hmm. If you're trading some style forever and then, you see the, 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 you know, someone else having success with, you know, buying off the 50 day or whatever they're doing. Um, you know, you got to kind of pick one and it's a little bit, I don't know. It's just, it's a little bit like reading, you know, different workout routines or something, different styles. You want to be a runner you want to be, you know, a weightlifter or something. Right. You, know, you have to, you have to stick with one. Otherwise you're, you're not going to be great at it. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you can't, if you can't uh, replicate the mechanics of what someone's doing, I'd be careful to dial into that too much. If you, you know, where's the stops, where are the mechanics of it? Is it more art than anything else? And, you know, things like that. Just, just want to watch out for falling into a, a trading style that, and you can trade whatever you want, but, you know, a style that you can't really understand and get a full grasp of and, and master. Right. Like if, you know, if there's no book for it and all that, um, you know, you got to have, you have to have the basic starting point, which is what, well, you know, the O'Neill book and Mark's books and stuff. And if you're a swing trader, those, those books, and you come out of that style, um, you can always add edges. Like I'm adding candlesticks, you know, mm -hmm. volume, I'm adding chart pattern, you know, just to read the chart better. And all the other stuff is great. If you, you know, it's just added to your, you know, your toolbox, but mm -hmm. you got to be fairly focused and trade over several market cycles. You know, you got to give yourself time. And that's like what I said to the fitness magazine, you know, if you open it up and you, you think you're by the next issue, you're going to be the guy in the cover. It's quite a grind. Like, so you can have some months where you're not trading. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have to practice doing that. And, and if you started trading, maybe you've never been cash before. You got a lot of long ways to go because you haven't traded through the crashes and stuff. You know I mean? And, and the breakout swing strategy to me is the safest way to go because if we fully roll over, mm -hmm. there's very little, few things breaking out. Right. And if nothing's breaking out, you're not buying it and then you're not losing any money. And, and theoretically, you know, the market can go as low as it wants mm -hmm. and take everything with it. Um, and, and, you know, trading through 2009, uh, 2008, 2009 crash, um, that, that was uh, definitely difficult, but you stop trading because there's nothing breaking out. So, and the same thing, you know, with the coronavirus and stuff like that. I was, I was in cash because I'm getting a lot better at it. It may be, you know, a couple days. I mean, no one was wearing masks yet. And the market was just telling you, know, listen to the market. Right. The market, you know, the same people that were saying, you know, don't wear masks that were saying wear masks later. I mean, no one knew what was going on, but the market knew. The market was, you know, stocks weren't acting right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like I think before February 25th, I was cash and I took the kids to Lego land and, you know, no one was wearing a mask and it was, everyone was talking about it, but nobody, uh, no one knew about it yet. So, but the market knew, so the market mm -hmm. will always tell you when to get out and whatever's around the corner, the market knows more than you. So that's just something, something I, I tend to think, I, I don't try to outsmart the market. Mm -hmm. and go and try to pull one off of the low or something like that, you know, let everything base out and set up again and, and tell me things are firm. And then there's some things breaking out. Then we can start targeting, um, start making money again. Right. Absolutely. So. And, uh, and does the number of setups, the number of like high tight flags that you're seeing and yeah. uh, that are actually working, does that factor into your kind of red, uh, green and yellow market condition. Well, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. If, if, well, that's because we're very extended. So that's something that's working a lot. So really all my focus is on there. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll show you like Tiger, T-I-G-R, I bought that. Right. I don't know that it's going to stick, but I've already took some profits up, I don't know, 20% or something on it and then stopped to even, I think. So um, in this kind of sketchy market, you, you can get a free look, hopefully, and uh, see if it gets out. So. And you also want to talk about the rising wedges and kind of Bolkowski's studies on that. So what kind of what kind of chart pattern is this and what what does it kind of indicate to you? Well, to me, this is kind of like the enemy of of breakout traders. Anything that's kind of rising like like in a, in a channel or, or a wedge like this. So, you know, this is one I was looking at and it's kind I don't know exactly how to explain it, but each new high there's the, there's buyers and then eventually it just dumps out somehow. And, and this just doesn't work typically. So if you're buying breakouts, you definitely want that down, down drift to the right thing. And, and uh, you know, David Ryan says that in, in some of his webinars and stuff. And, and this is over and over again, I see this and, and I want to chase this because this is a high tight flex so, and it has some slashing through it. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I, you want to see maybe a move out and then a drift down when it stays in this channel and just gets wedgy. It just, I don't know. It's just something I don't like in a pattern. So I don't want to get too much into that, but no, it makes sense. Cause it's yeah. kind of the art form. It, it just doesn't right. look right. It, it's very kind of volatile up and down. It, it's not tight. Like, like what you want to see. Yeah, the look, it doesn't have the look of what we want. And, and, and this, once again, it goes back to almost uh, that tight action. I want to see the shake on the final, on the mm -hmm. end and the last half of the pattern. It's really my favorite thing because when you get a good reset and, and this is a fairly narrow high tight flag. So, Playing the high, I mean, it's it's a gamble, of course, but, you know, I guess crypto, this is like a crypto bank and there's the theme and, you know, it, it's a lot of volume here and the secondary was absorbed and mm -hmm. maybe ARK Invest was involved and, you know, so I wanted to play this. So I hit this pretty hard here, but on the signal I have now, I'm just, I sold some into strength. I wasn't really sure where the market was. Otherwise I would have just kept it stop even, but. No, this is definitely a leader I want to probably get back on again or even add back to. Mm -hmm. so I do want to play this trend. Now, if it trends like this, you know, on the screen, the whole way up from here, I'm going to stay in it. I'm not, I'm not like a day trader. Definitely not like that. I want to, you know, an easy, easy uh, trend and then just mm -hmm. ride it. So, and yeah, you can use, you know, the different moving averages for stops or just, you know, selling into extreme strength. Like, like this got away from the moving average. I would have been okay to just close it there, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, even up here, if you just close it and book the gain, I mean, that's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty extended, mm -hmm. but it's just getting a lot of interest right here. So, uh, you know, yeah, that's, that's just that shakeout and the volume and then the red signal, I'm taking it sooner because, I mean, I think I still had a short uh, a hedge on here and the hedge is, you know, it was working and I, you're not sure where you're at. So you have to kind of have those kind of incremental gains, right? And, and, and take the risk out of it as much as possible. So when I'm at this point, I don't really have any risk other than gap risk. If this gap below it in some news, then I'm in trouble for whatever, whatever it gaps to, it could gap to zero theoretically. But, you know, if it comes and hits the stop in an orderly fashion, I'm, I'm profitable because I've already taken some profits out, you know, into strength there. Um, kind of on a funny day. And, you know, we don't know. Our style of traders didn't, we didn't really know where the market was going, but the, the ones I kept are putting my equity curve, you know, into all time highs still, even though I'm very cautious still. So it's okay to be cautious, I guess. It do, doesn't make you money necessarily, but it's, it's sometimes it's better to just make small gains during certain periods, right? Like if you play this whole chart, that's a kind of easy environment if you own this and then if it starts you know shaking out and all this stuff you know the overall market was kind of doing more of that so mm -hmm. this is you know trying to be careful and uh th this pattern just repeats itself over and over again um you know just this tight action maybe a little vcp but i like on the end the undercut right it doesn't have to contract less for me as long as the atr is coming in uh and, and then it resets and then you have this and I love this kind of down candle. Mm -hmm. Like this was on Palantir. You know, I just remember that. It did this on a, on a false breakout and then it checked back and went above that. 
you know, this, this is that kind of nice buy point right at the high. Mm -hmm. And this is the candlestick confluence in the wick. Now you got the wick play, right? Everybody wants the wick play. <laughs> I think that's a wick play. Maybe Oliver would agree. I'm not sure. So yeah, taking it, you know, into this wick. I mean, it's not the previous day, but this wick, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, two trading, uh, another trading day ago. So, <clears throat> but yeah, so it's do, doing this over and over again. Um, you know, this is some kind of healthcare software and everybody was, you know, pumping T doc. So I decided I'll take a high tight flag. I don't know if it's exactly the same thing and maybe I don't dive into it as much as you need to, but if that's where the money's going, that's where you want, you want to start looking. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And this is this tiger one. I can't see actually under your picture there. Can you see the full chart on your screen? Yeah. Yep. I can see. Yeah. So this was on the volume scanner. If you see here, Tiger, it's the um, showing up here with, you know, three, 387%, 86% relative volume there, right? That's huge. Yeah. So, and that's at the end of the day. In the beginning of the day, when I bought it, um, when it was coming out, I'm moving the chart around so I can't see behind our pictures there. Yeah, no um, problem. It, uh, it was 10 times volume on that day. And you can see these skyscrapers, is what I, you know, down here in the, in the volume. I mean, this is like, people are stepping over each other to get right. this stock and, and people would say, you know, what are you, are you completely crazy? It just went up almost 300%, but I think I already took a scale up at the high, high of the day and moved the stop to even, and that was about 20% or so. So I'm getting a free look at it. Hopefully it continues. I'm, I'm cautious because of the, the market signal that I have for myself, maybe, you know, the viewer, or whoever you, you can have your own market signal and have your own read of it. If you're cautious, you know, you have to have your risk management different. And then when you're free with it, when you're just, when you can do no wrong and you leave your stops open, things like that. So, but there's nothing wrong with being a little more risk averse. And then once you get into money, taking some off and moving the stop. And, and I'll typically do that when you get 20% out, you have to start changing your risk. I mean, you know, right. if you're wrong for 20%, you know, you don't want to take a stop. I mean, once you have a good gain, it's just, you have to start worrying about not giving it back, obviously. So, right. So this is STLZ. This is a recent SPAC, I think. Uh, yeah. So it's some kind of gaming play. And I was going to show this as a watch list for you. Like, you know, people say like, well, what are you watching? Well, I already, I bought this today because right. I couldn't resist. It's a high tight flag and it has a 45 degree ascent to it in the flagpole basically, which is actually maybe sometimes better mm -hmm. with, with the stats, uh, uh, buying that coming out of there. And you see all the, the, the big volume bars in here and it looks like a leader. So I want to give it a try and, and, and it's out a couple, a couple percent here. Um, yeah. So hopefully that works. And this was when I was watching, maybe I wanted a few more days, but when they all start working, you know, want to try one or two and, your sizing and coming back in from, you know, cash, higher cash levels is obviously going to be smaller as you want to kind of test. Right. That's what I'm doing. I'm not saying what anyone else needs to do, but I'm testing some of these positions out, see if I can get anything going, see if I'm in the right place and start using, I mean, if this jumps up 20% now, you know, I have a free look at a couple other names uh, and then see if I can get a few out. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what I'm doing. And, I tried this one today and it, you know, this was the first one to go in this alternate energy theme, I believe, or they put it in materials, but uh, a AMRS, as you can see this uh, kind of lowest volume in 10 days, this tight action over the moving average and you kind of make a pivot out of it mm -hmm. and, and coming up over there um, with this power, I give it a little more flexibility and just, you know, gave it a try, had a little bit of volume. Um, so it worked pretty good. I just bought this this morning. This is official position. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe it just keeps going, you know, and we're just, we're just taking a look at it. Hopefully I won't lose on it. I can move my stop now that I'm up that much. What's it up on the day, like 18% or so. So, you know, now, now you change, you know, obviously in the morning, I'll probably change my stop, which was, you know, roughly 5% or so. Um, yeah. And then maybe this flags out, does the high tight flag and continues. So this is kind of trying to get in the high tight flag, a little bit on the diagonal, a little bit on the pivot off the moving average, trying to use a volume trigger. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so, you know, we're trying it, we're getting all that together on this. Uh, the volume, yeah, the ATR came in a little bit too, but I mean, this has made quite a move. So sometimes you don't want to use that. I mean, it's just, you know, it's there for its purpose, but once you start making the move, you just get rid of it. Um, and actually I have a question about um, some buys. So if a stock gaps up to the pivot, are you still willing to take that? And also is there kind of a, if it has to move up 10% to the pivot, 15% of the pivot, are you still going to take it through that level? Oh, you mean like if this just kept going like 30% today and this went through this, the high, the high there? Yeah. Yeah. I guess that no. if, if it's already made a major move on that day, right. are you still weren't willing to buy it basically? Um, it depends if that's what's working. That's the context. Okay. Right. So have I seen that work lately? And is that the style? Is that the group that everyone's getting the money on? And, and I will try that and I can be wrong very quickly and, and with a 5% stop. But when you're extended, like, now you're, if this was maybe 25% on the day to this high and you're buying that, you can easily have a 5% dip and continue out. So you're having a lower odds trade. And you do want that kind of tight action to shoot against with a stop below, you know, one of the, one of these bars mm -hmm. preferably, but even this is a little extended. I'm not even sure I got below the bar on the, on the stop. So, you know, it's just the, that's where I felt it was going today. And there's some, some guessing and some art to it. So we'll see how it goes, you know, comment below. <laughs> yep. And um, can you talk a little bit about placing your initial stop loss? Cause I think that's a very important concept for people. Yeah. Uh, you say, you say you want it less than 5%, but are you placing it just below a technical level or are you just using a standard percentage? Well, I'm always trying to get, like I said, like 5% or less. So if, if I can't get a, that low risk entry, I probably have to wait and I'm buying it wrong. I mean, that's right. the secret is the, the perfect setup. Uh, you know, that's, that's the secret to trading. You have to have the perfect setup. And if you're right here, if you buy it at the high, I, I don't know where your stop is. And, you know, coming out of this pivot, good. Um, but yeah, you, you want to look for that, that area. And I read volume profile too. I traded E-mini. I mean, I've done so many different things. So, I'm shooting sometimes against the volume profile of this area. And I'll combine that with the lows of, of the day and say, you know, how many of these things line up to make that a proper stop? Right. And there's some art to it, but I'm giving the basic rule of if I can use 5% and it makes sense and I'm working on a leader with some power, I'm in good shape. So yeah, this, this was a, uh, a watch list one I was going to share. Uh, I figured maybe you want to see what I'm looking at. So this is that nice 45 degree ascent in the, you know, two months or so high tight flag. And, you know, I probably could have bought this today, but this is very thin. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't <laughs> definitely educational purpose only. And when you get caught in this one, I think the volume is uh, average daily volume is not very high. So, but this is a good pattern. And the volume today was uh, right here. So it was number three on the list with a uh, 360%. So that was definitely viable and that's very, very tight. And you have these big volume bars and um, obviously a small bio is very speculative, but you know, you can make huge amounts of money and stuff like this. So just something to look at. This was definitely viable. And um, is there a minimum number of days that you look for, for a high tight flag? Cause this is only like six yeah. days within the, the, the flag. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. So this is eight days and edit was eight days, I think. But I mean, the lowest I'll go is seven. When I was mm -hmm. trading some of those SPACs back uh, maybe last year, they started going with no pause and that was all in context. So um, I'd rather have it build out a, a longer area, mm -hmm. right? I mean, if this is all I get and it goes 10 times volume, you know, now you're, they, they changed the game on you and then they, they showed their hand. So I might jump in, but yeah, not, not six days or less. No way. <laughs> so eight days is pretty good for me. I mean, th this is viable. I'd start buying that there because of the volume. I would have mm -hmm. rather waited for, uh, and I didn't buy this by the way. I almost, I was thinking about it, but um, yeah, this volume was there. So it definitely, it definitely lined up. So this, this was a, uh, definitely a potential and 
you know, it was definitely on my platform and hopefully some people got in. I think it's going to, well, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> this has the, has the characteristics of a, you know, a setup that I tend to look for. Yeah. And uh, so, so is this one, there's this plug and maybe, maybe my chart's a little crazy looking here. I'm just starting this uh, ACP uh, stock charts. So it's kind of cool. Uh, plug is, uh, you know, kind of alternative uh, energy, very tight, high tight flag. And um, I bought this today, uh, not really in the money too much yet, but I was going to put this on the watch, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to start to see if I can get some of these working or not. So a little bit of volume, but it's more about coming out of this tight area of low volume. So, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe you might've had this yesterday too. So <laughs> we're seeing, we're seeing some of the same stuff, which is cool. Mm -hmm. And um, when you, when you buy a stock, I, I expect you want to be at a profit right away, but uh, will you take off a trade if, if you don't have two, 3% cushion at, at least at the end of the day? Oh no, not really. No, no. I, you give it to it, your stop. I mean, it has to have the violations. It's like if it right. goes up a risk multiple and comes back, I might cut it depending on uh, the, the market conditions and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, you have, you have to give it some space and, and honor the stop because, you know, if this opens tomorrow in the money, now I'm in good shape uh, as it works its way out, hopefully. So if not, it's, it's a stop lower. So. And then I, would, I might try this again. It's definitely a leader. It's working its way up higher and making very tight patterns on, you know, with, with interested buyers, you know, so uh, in a good space. So we'll see. I mean, that's just, uh, you know, you can comment below on, on what happened to the stock. All right, Leif, thanks so much for uh, walking through those charts and explaining your process with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, for everybody watching, uh, make sure you go ahead and check out Leif's Twitter. It'll be down below in the description. Um, Leif, thanks so much for being here. Um, appreciate you uh, being on, taking your time to talk about your methods and stuff. Hey, thanks so much for having me. It's a lot of fun. I, li I like challenging all, all the guys on finance, Twitter, you know, put some rockets up there and, you know, let, let's do it. <laughs> There's been a lot of rockets lately, which is yeah. awesome. Um, all right, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead and leave a like down below and subscribe if you are new and we'll see you guys in future videos. <laughs>